Good morning, my friends. My name is Lama Jigme Gyatso. I'm the non-sectarian Buddhist monk, teacher, healer, and tantrika. One of my students asked me a series of very good questions, and these questions are so good. I feel they're you, their answers are of universal importance. So I'm going to answer her questions right now in a video. And don't worry, I'm not going to use any proper nouns or use anybody's names. These are very important um, questions. So let's get right to it. Ah, oh, the wonders of Facebook. Okay. I... My student writes, Miss S writes, I'm learning from my mistakes. Assholes are unhappy and no one can change it, only themselves. The one who wants to be unhappy is unhappy and I must accept that. In the future, I only want to make those happy who want my happiness and freedom as well. So, there's at least two things we should explore with this first email. Yes, there are some aggressive, cruel, foolish people who are unhappy. Not all the people who are unhappy are cruel and foolish, but, but some are. Um, sometimes people's happiness is an easy fix. Sometimes it's a difficult fix. Um, but it's important to recognize whether or not someone wants our help. I met a gal from Arkansas who told me something which I found wonderful. She said, don't try to teach a pig to sing. It wastes your time and annoys the pig. Someone's really unhappy. They don't really want to change. Then find someone who wants your help. In the future, I only want to make those happy who want my happiness and freedom as well. And that's brilliant. Um, it's easy to fall in love with someone who has a whole bunch of problems. I've done this numerous times. It's easy to fall in love with someone to think, I'll fix them. Or to think, I'll set an awesome example and they'll entrain up to my lifestyle choices. No. If someone is in, in your vision, in your assessments, if someone is not super spectacular right now, then don't date them. Regardless of how hard you're crushing on them, or how deeply you fall in love with them, if you know for certain you can't be happy with someone if they don't change, then don't be with them. So, Miss S, well done. She continues. How can I develop compassion for someone who has absolutely no compassion? Okay, so that's a very good question. And the answer is going to seem kind of weird. In Buddhism, especially liberal Buddhism, which is what I practice and teach, we do not choose to be compassionate on someone because they deserve it. We do not choose to be loving towards someone because they deserve it. Our compassion is based on needs. So a compa someone requires compassion for one reason only, their suffering. Someone requires love for one reason only, they need something they don't have. That's it. Then why do we practice compassion? Why do we choose to cultivate the intention to take away other people's sufferings? Because that makes us joyful. That purifies our bad karma. It speeds us on a spiritual path. 
why do we choose to develop the intention to meet others' needs? Because it makes us happy. It increases our good karma. And it propels us on the spiritual path. Now there's a difference between cultivating the intention to take away away someone's suffering, cultivating the intention to meet someone else's needs, and actually rolling up your sleeves and trying to fix someone's life. In the West, we have the idea of the all or nothing approach. That might sound good on paper or perhaps on a bumper sticker, but it doesn't really pan out in reality. What we need to do is help people as much as we can as much as they will allow us, and as much as our mutual circumstances will allow us. And that might sound like a tall order to figure out, and the answer is, it is a tall order. It requires something we call discerning wisdom. And you're going to make a lot of mistakes on the path. So think of it this way. They're not really failures, they're educational experiences. You earnestly yearn to progress on the path of wisdom and compassion and love. Find a teacher who will work with you, who knows your names, who's actually in your life. If you see some guy teach at a credit auditorium once every two years, he's not your teacher. You know, lots of people saw Led Zeppelin in concert halls, didn't mean they were buddies. A teacher's your teacher if he knows your name and if you're in his he's in your life and you can contact him on, on Skype or email and, or in a class and ask a question to address your specific non-generic precise needs find a teacher receive his, his instructions apply them and that's how you progress on the path let's continue Dear Lama, oh yeah, I'll continue with uh, letter number two. I think Mr. T, not the celebrity Mr. T, a different Mr. T, I think T is a very poor hell being. I have the strong wish to heal him from his sufferings. I think it's not possible. Good observation. For those who are enthusiastic about anything, whether it's spiritual or secular, scientific or artistic, vocational or recreational, whatever we do, if we're enthusiastic, we fit into one of two categories. The majority of folks who are fundamentalistic, the minority who are liberal. And by the way, at different points in my life, I've been fundamentalist and now I'm liberal. When I was a fundamentalist, I was driven by fear, swept up by rigidity, embraced by intolerance, and seduced by aggression. When we are controlled by fear, we don't ask ourselves, gee, do I really want to do this or not? We ask ourselves, can I succeed at doing it? I once spoke to a student who told me that he spent a lovely afternoon in a very hip coffee shop. He saw a really beautiful girl. And he was thinking about approaching her, but he wasn't sure how she'd respond. And I expressed to him that it doesn't matter how she responds. All he needs to ask is, when he looks at her, is he attracted to her? Does he want to converse with her? Is he interested in getting to know her? If he answers yes to those, then he should initiate. And she's allowed to say no thank you and be on her merry way. The success of the interaction is not based on getting what we want when we want it. Or keeping what we like for as, like, as long as we want it. No. This, the success of the interaction is determined by are we being authentic and spontaneous and loving 
and lies. Whether someone, how someone else responds to that does not make us a failure. Now, when we see someone who's all screwed up, we can bless them from afar. And a good teacher, a good Bonte, a good Geshe, you know, a good Kenpo, a good Lama, a good Shifu, a good Roshi will teach you how to do that. How to send someone blessings from afar. And so we don't ask, will it work? Because only that comes from a fear paradigm. We rather operate from the spontaneous, authentic paradigm. Do I desire it to work? Now there's a myth out there, and I call that comes from what I call the fortune cookie school of Buddhism. It says, "Hey, all that I need to know about what Buddha taught can be found on the bumper sticker, perhaps a T-shirt." Nope. No, no. Ain't that cute? But it's wrong. <laughs> so here's the deal. There's a myth out there from the fortune cookie school of Buddhism that says all desire is bad. No. Slavery does it to desire is bad. Yes. But Buddha talked about wholesome desires and destructive desires. You know, um, there's some of the sutras or suttas, depending on which language you're playing with, Sanskrit or Pali, that talk about cultivating the desire that all beings be happy. That's virtuous. It's endorsed by Buddha. So let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. So the question is, when we look at some guy who's acting like a bastard, is do we want them to have greater wisdom. Do we want in, do them to have greater love and consequently have greater peace and greater joy because peace comes from wisdom and joy comes from love. If the answer is yes, then use the techniques your teacher taught you to bless them from afar. The Christians have a wonderful phrase well, some Christians have a wonderful phrase they call it intercessory prayer, or using prayer to intercede on others' behalf. And as Buddhists, we can do that with our blessings. We can bless or meditate on someone else's behalf. Can we meditate someone into nirvana? Probably not. But can we meditate in someone into a better place? We know where they have more wisdom and more love. Yeah, we can do that. Um, let's see, let me read what else she wrote. Final bit. What can I do? The world is full of crazy maniacs who call themselves medicines and they give the pills to the healthy ones instead of taking them themselves. Okay, this is persons writing me. They're from a different country where they speak a different language and, and I have a handful of students who, who are learning meditation in a foreign language. And I have such respect for people who have the intellectual ability to do that. I think that is spectacular. Even Jesus said, do not try to take a mote of dust out of someone's eye when there's an entire tree in your eye. First, take the tree out of your eye, and then you can take the particle of dust out of someone else's eye. Of course, that was a paraphrase, but you get the idea. There's also people out there running around saying, Hey, you know what? You know what your problem is? Blah, 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 blah. And, they're ta and this comes very obvious that they, they do not suffer from a preponderance of wisdom or love. <laughs> that they are brick shy of the load in the wisdom and love department. So yeah, there's a bunch of boobs out there. So bless them from afar with wisdom and love. There are crazy maniacs out there. So take away 
their aggression, take away their fear, take away their foolishness, take away their sadness. You can do that using the techniques that Buddha taught. Um, in Tibet, to use Tibetan terms, you can use techniques such as Tonglen and Dzogchen or Tonglen and Mahamudra. To use Pali terms, we can use um, the techniques found in the Satipatthana and the techniques found in the Metta Sutta. Or to use terminology I'm comfortable with, we can practice the four breaths, we can practice the five loves, we can practice the six R's in such a way that blesses other people. And you don't have to believe in it. Physics works whether you believe in it or not. Physics is a, I'm sorry, interdependence is a self-apparent reality regardless of whether we believe in it or not. If you don't believe something very teeny, like a thought or a wish or an act of meditation can affect something really big, like a huge problem that's been around for a long time. Then spend an evening in the summer naked in a tent with a thirsty mosquito as a companion. And guess what? Whether you're trying to Meditate in that tent, or you're trying to sleep in that tent, you'll find out that something very teeny can have a profound effect on something much larger than itself. Likewise, the techniques of love and wisdom can be applied to make the world a better place. If you don't have a teacher, you're welcome to use my free videos. You're welcome to attend my classes. Entirely welcome. If you have a teacher, make sure you have a personal relationship with him where he knows your name and he's in your life and you can ask him the specific questions and all that kind of good stuff. In my last video, I gave you the wrong date for the next class. Um might just do that again. Don't want to do that. So let me check out the date real quickly. Let me say the next class. Yeah, I got to look it up. Give me a second. I'm back with my trusty iPhone. Okay, go to the calendar and the month. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whoops. Okay. The next series of meditation classes begins in less than six weeks on Tuesday, the 14th of January. If you live in the greater Los Angeles area, by all means, attend in person. If you don't live next to me, then attend via Skype. There's only so much room in this venue. I can only host so many people on Skype at one time. So if you're interested, use the lamajigme.com link below to register now. If you have any comments or questions, or you just want to give me a great big cyber hug, contact me on Facebook using the link below. May you and yours be healthy and happy. Om Namo Buddhaya. Bye-bye.